Hey everyone, this is Scott from CertMedia.com, and in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to optimize the J News magazine theme. As I said in the previous video, where I covered the theme in detail, I'd be showing you how to optimize it using only free plugins, naturally. So we have our before test here with a 3.4 seconds here. I know that this is the test that I ran in the last video. I just kept it open and I didn't bother to rerun it after the styling changes because it won't change it really too much. We have a 1.66 second low time for Pingdom and an 88 on the performance grade, which is totally acceptable for this site. And our, and our uh, page speed insights grade is honestly our lowest on the mobile performance test. We get a 46, which is pretty slow. You always wanna be at least above 60 in my mind to be in the general website crowd that is optimized. And then you are at a 74 on the desktop grade, which is really bad because the desktop grade has little to no real network throttling. So this can stand to have a lot of improvement. So what we're going to do is we're gonna go through and optimize it using only free plugins. You can use any plugins of your choice, whether they are free or paid. But for the sake of the video, I find that it's more useful for most users to only use free plugins. So the first thing we wanna look at is we wanted to look at the waterfall where our TTFB was 817 milliseconds. Even though that I am on a VPS server, I did not have any sort of server-side caching enabled except for Redis for the WordPress backend. So we wanna have a page caching plugin. And the easiest one to use for this particular theme is called Cache Enabler. We're gonna go ahead and install it, totally free plugin on the WordPress.org repository. You're just gonna find it, it's gonna be by key CDN, and you're going to install it. And while we are at it, we're also going to install auto-optimize. And then we're going to activate cache enabler because this is the first one that we're going to want to use. We're gonna go ahead and click settings and we're gonna go to cache enabler. And for this particular theme, the, since we don't have anything e-commerce related, we don't have to do anything really particular. We're going to enable the clear the complete cache if a new post has been published. Uh, we, got, we don't need to click this one unless you have this sidebar feature enabled. If you're using the sidebar feature, you might as well just go ahead and clear it. For the pre-compression of pages, we're going to enable this. We will not be creating an additional version because we are not using Optimus. And then make sure to clear the complete cache if any plugin has been upgraded. Since we're going to be using auto-optimize, we're not going to use the cache minification tool. We're gonna to go ahead and click save, and now the page caching plugin is active. What we're going to do is going to, we're going to rerun a check on the home page. We reloaded it, and now we're going to retest it only with GT Matrix to see what our response time is right here. We were at 817 milliseconds. We want to get this down to at least around two to 300. So we're going to let this test run, and then that should reduce a lot of the initial headache. So we're, it's gone ahead and it's finished and it's doing better, but more importantly, now we're at 193 milliseconds. That is significantly faster. Our next thing will be to activate auto-optimize. We're using auto-optimize to do our asset combining, and the reason for this is asset bundling, even in HTTP2, can yield performance gains. We're gonna go ahead and go to auto-optimize, and we're going to enable the optimized JavaScript, CSS, and HTML options. For this particular theme, we're just going to make sure that jQuery.js is excluded and that we are also aggregating, we're, we're not, we're, we are not also aggregating inline CSS, but we are generating data URIs. We're going to go ahead and enable this. And we're going to test to make sure that it's running okay. Since I have it enabled to run the optimizing while logged in, we're going to make sure that there are no errors. So it looks like we are bundling our assets and the only thing that we're still getting is the broken CSS file from the import process. This may have just been an issue on my particular site, so don't worry if you don't have the 404. We go through and we wanna make sure that we only have the few CSS files that are still remaining, the broken CSS style right here, but dash icons in the admin bar, which are the default exclusions in auto-optimize. And then we just want to make sure that jQuery.js is continued to be excluded, which it is. The reason that we are not combining inline CSS is that the theme outputs a lot of custom and dynamic CSS in the HTML. 
If we were to combine this, the cash sides could get out of control and we don't want to do that. One thing we're going to do also is we're going into the, not the extra section, but we're going into the, the extra section and we're going to combine our Google fonts and load them asynchronous and load them with preload, not the asynchronous option, because this will still load them in a non-render blocking fashion and it will add font display swap. We will be removing Emoji.js because most sites just don't use Emoji.js and we will be removing query strings from static resources. We're going to go ahead and run this. And now as you can see in the header, we have the auto optimized fonts. It is loading them as asynchronous and an added font display swap. This makes the CSS no longer render blocking and it does yield performance gains. Now this is the basic, most straightforward way of optimizing the website. We've now combined our assets, we've deferred the JS, we excluded jQuery so that way we don't run into too many issues, and we avoided any real breakage. But there are some additional options. We're gonna run the GT Matrix test again just to see where we're currently sitting. I'm not gonna run each of the other tests until we're fully done because they take a lot longer. So we've gone ahead and where are we sitting at now? We are, we forgot to clear the cache. <laughs> We're going to go ahead and run this again now that we cleared the cache. That way we can let it build. And we're going to go and play with the theme options because the theme options have additional optimization options for this theme specific functionality. The theme also automatically lazy loads the images, which is a really good thing. A lot of themes now are finally integrating lazy loading into their base theme, which is incredibly important. A lot of people just don't bother to lazy load, which yields all sorts of problems, and we don't want that to happen. It looks like my varnish is running, so we are going to deal with that here in a minute, but we're first going to go into the customizer. We're going to go to the additional options section. We're gonna to go to the speed optimization section and we have additional options. First of all, optimized assets will only load the necessary assets on the current page. This is really good. What this does is it tells the theme, hey, you don't need to load everything on every page. As you can see though, it looks like it had a interesting side effect, at least for the home page, or it redirected us to a different URL. What we will do is we will use Ajax for the main menu category if they are using the mega menu. That way we're not loading everything immediately and they're only being downloaded if the user so requests it. We can use base 64 image encoding for the empty image, which is the lazy load image that's being put in. And then we're gonna go ahead and optimize the load assets functionality. And we're going to publish this. What we will do now is we're going to just turn off the feature in here so I can illustrate what's going on with the optimized assets functionality. So what JNews did is it took all the CSS that it was previously merging and it said, well, we're only going to load the CSS that it's specifically called for on these pages. And it did just that. It broke up the CSS that it was loading and it's now only loading the CSS and the JS that it knows that it needs on these pages. And they can do this by looking at the short codes that are being loaded from the WP Bakery Builder. So now we're going to turn this option back on so that way we can see the performance benefits and we will clear the cache once again. While that's being done, all the assets have been bundled and we are good to go. So we're going to run another GT Matrix test. So this helped us trim some of the fat, so to speak, by automatically loading the assets that are only required instead of bundling all the assets on all the pages. We're gonna go ahead and see how this performs and we're going to then run the other test if it passes. So it looks like my varnish on the server was not cleared, so I'm going to go off the camera and I'm going to go fix that. So that way we can run the test again. I remember specifically turning it off for this application, but you know, it happens. After we do this, we're going to see a reduction in the total number of 
requests that have been made and that we will also see a reduction in the page size because when you combine the CSS and the JS, you yield a smaller file size due to the efficiencies of compressing large files. But you also will see a reduction on the total number of bytes because we enabled that option in the advanced theme options section. We're going to come over to here, go to the application and disable my varnish since you shouldn't have been running. Yes. Okay. Now varnish should no longer be running. And we're just going to test this by opening up my dev tools and I'm going to look at my network tab, which should tell me if varnish is running. It is not running. Perfect. So now we're going to come over here and run the real test and we're going to see where we're at. The GNU's theme was pretty optimized out of the box, even though we had several images on here and a fully built home page. That was a really nice looking home page. Looks like it honestly came out of a custom design. It's aside from the slow TTFB because the varnish cache wouldn't wasn't hit on the first run. The page size was small and the request count was low. We come over here and now we have 19 requests. Our page size Surprisingly increased, this might have been because of the base64 encoded images, but we're still seeing performance gains on the fully loaded time, the request counts going down, and we still have the slow uh, 404 file request, and this was probably from the import process, but we're seeing pretty good gains. The biggest suggestion we still have is to use cookie-free domains, which I never bother with that suggestion. Cookie-free domains is honestly a pretty wasted suggestion because it would save you so few bytes that it wouldn't even really register on the performance test. But the CDN is a good suggestion. Make sure you have a CDN of your choice. I prefer Cloudflare. It's free and it's probably the fastest performing CDN on the market and it is the fastest performing DNS provider on the market. We're gonna go ahead and run the other test to see where we currently sit. So remember we had a 1.66 second load time over here. For the pingdom test, we're going to run it again to see where we're sitting. I'm expecting pretty solid performance gains across the board now that we've gone through and dealt with everything we needed to. And the only one that may still be a stickler is page speed insights. And that might be because of the total amount of CSS. Even though we have all the CSS combined, we're sitting at 190 kilobytes, which is quite large and this is mostly due to our inclusion of the base 64 encoded images which have advantages and disadvantages and you'll see one right here going ahead and running this and we will now run this page speed insights test we're just expecting to see some performance improvement across both tests and we've our performance grade went up which honestly doesn't mean too much on pingdom but our request count is down and our load time is also down, which is pretty decent. The only thing I would wish is that I also had a CDN on access for this, which would also improve the performance further. And our mobile performance now, keep in mind that this was previously a 46 and now it's a 72. There is still work that could be done here. We could eliminate the render blocking CSS, but that would cause us, that would require us to get the critical CSS which can be quite time consuming and honestly could just cause things to not work properly. We didn't set up any WebP images because they frankly weren't really necessary for this test. And I don't like using something like short pixel to do WebP images. And the reason for that is, is when you use a plugin to do a dynamic rewrite, it can interfere with other plugins. Um, I saw a website, I was working on a website earlier today even where they had an issue with one signal, not loading their icons. And it ultimately came down to their short pixel was rewriting them as WebP and it was giving a malformed markup and disabling the functionality allowed it to work once again. So very weird interaction. So I don't use that. I prefer using something that is a CDN service that will just simply take what I need. It'll take the image, it will transform it via the headers and it will just send them a cached version of the image from JPEG to WebP. So it won't rewrite the URLs, it'll just send the WebP image via a header when the file is requested. There are specific CDNs that do this type of thing. Uh, I believe even Optimus, the plugin, does that. Shortpixel has a service that does it. UImageOptimizer has a service that does just that. 
a bunch of image optimization plugins now have a CDN that does just that. But overall, we've greatly improved our performance across the board. They're still not done. We could squeeze it a little bit more, but we went from a 46 to a 72 and a 74 to a 91. We reduced our fully loaded time in half and our request count also by in half. I'm pretty pleased with that. If you have any specific questions, please feel free to ask in the comments below. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching and goodbye.